So now in this video, we're going to take a look at this uh, Sane Smart DSO. So that's Digital Storage Oscilloscope. It's a handheld oscilloscope, and it only costs about $100. That's uh, the two things I liked about it. I don't have any space for an oscilloscope, and $100 is uh, a lot less to lose if I damage this than uh, a more expensive oscilloscope. So in any case, the instructions that come with it don't really help you get going in using it. I don't have experience using an oscilloscope, so I've been pretty much learning as I go. But to begin with, you hit the uh, power button. I'm just going to kind of show you what I've learned so far. And uh, it seems like everything, when you turn it on, is set to a certain setting. And so we can just begin from there. So now one of the first things you'll notice we have two lines here and that's for the two channels. Now this scope only comes with the uh, probe for or just one probe I should say. So I want to get rid of that line so I'm going to go down to channel B and then uh, when you hit the left arrow, no when you hit M you'll get options and then uh, enable. I'm going to go down and now hit uh, right for off and then M to close that. Now that channel is gone. All we got is uh, channel A which is uh, this line right here and it connects to this probe that we're using. So now that we got one line for uh, channel A we're gonna take a look at uh, channel A a little more so M and right there you'll notice it says uh, I don't know where they shut. It says uh, AC DC and then AC so now that causes some problems we'll look at that coming up next so we're gonna look at the changing voltage of a capacitor first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to this time base and I'm gonna change it until it says two seconds and you notice the line stop kinda jiggling and it looks like when we do this it sets it to trigger as soon as you get a high voltage then it will start taking its reading so first off we're gonna measure the changing voltage of the capacitor this is a 555 timer circuit set in a stable mode so when the capacitor bounces between one-third and two-thirds of the power source voltage the LED either turns on or off depending on which state the uh, capacitor was just in and so with this AC setting that I just showed you earlier we can still get a measurement of the changing voltages of the capacitor which we'll look at here so we kinda got a spike when I first made the connection but you can see as the capacitor charges and discharge we get a readable wave there now this is gonna stay on the screen until we clear it and I haven't found a great way to clear it but if I do that time base again, turn it down to milliseconds until we get this wavering line, then I can go back up to two seconds. Now we got a straight line again. So now before we look at the voltage of the output and the problem that this causes while it's set in that AC mode, I uh, forgot to mention we have the uh, alligator clip that comes from the probe clip to the negative side of the capacitor basically directly to the negative rail there and uh, so we need to do that and then the probe will compare those two voltages so now we're gonna measure the output of the 555 timer which is either on or off it holds a steady voltage unlike the capacitor so let's see if I can get a good connection there you go and you see we're not getting a steady voltage. It uh, never looks like uh, a steady voltage. It looks like it's always changing. And that's a problem. And that's because of the AC setting. So now again, to clear it out, we have this highlighted. And I'm going to just lower the time base to uh, microseconds, actually, until I see that jiggle. And then I uh, go back up. Maybe when it was a straight line, that would have been fine, too. But uh, I'm sure there's a better way to just clear this out, but this is the best one I found so far. And now that we got that cleared out, 
we're going to go up to uh, channel A there. That's the blue line we're looking at. We'll hit M and then go down to where it says AC DC and set it to DC. So now zooming back out, we'll take a reading of the output again. This time though, instead of attaching it directly to the output, I'm just going to connect it here. This part of the resistor goes directly to the output and uh, hopefully we still get a nice signal from that. And there you can see now the, the voltage holds steady when it's either on or off. It just jumps between the two. So to get the slow readings, I think this is kind of the best way, or it's the best way I've come up with so far to take these readings. Of course, if you're going to have a steady voltage from time to time, you need it in the DC setting mode. Whereas if the voltages are changing, it seems like it's okay in AC mode, which is how it's set when you turn it on. So if you turn it on and you're going to measure DC, make sure you go and change that DC setting. So now just to check that it resets everything, these are the settings that I had. Here's the power button. I'll hold it down. And then up here is the play pause. That If we press that, it actually shuts it completely down. Now we'll turn it back on. And we let go as soon as that lights up. And now you see we're back to the normal settings. We got the two lines there, so channel A and channel B. And if I go to channel A, you see it's still set to AC. So it looks like uh, whenever you restart it, you'll come back to that same start point. And then you can make all your changes from there.